I'd like to tell you a powerful story from American history, but it's one a lot of people don't know. The first game that Curious Experience Design created told this same story, so it is near and dear to my heart. The story begins in 1763. The French and Indian War was finally over. The American colonists had fought alongside the British Army to win in what seemed like a permanent victory over their enemies, the French. Britain wanted to maintain this peace, but the people that the colonists had fought against were still there. Maintaining this peace was going to be difficult, and it was going to cost money. Already in debt from fighting this war, the British government decided that the colonists should be the one to pay. So in 1765, three years after the war's end, they passed the Stamp Act. The Stamp Act didn't have anything to do with postage. What it did was require revenue stamps to be put on all kinds of public documents, like contracts and licenses. It would be easy to implement and to enforce. Or so they thought. Disapproval of the Stamp Act was near unanimous in America. But people were divided on how to actually respond. Some favored sending petitions explaining that the Stamp Act was ill-timed and poorly conceived. Other colonists insisted that since this was taxation without representation, it violated their rights as Englishmen and that they should demand its immediate repeal. In Boston, many people favored that approach, but the Massachusetts government chose the gentler approach. Furious that their politicians had chosen this meek path that they were sure was going to be ineffective, people began to plot about how they could take more direct action. Around July of 1765, a group of people began meeting in private in the back room of a rum distillery. This group called themselves the Loyal Nine, and they would grow into what we now know today as the Sons of Liberty. Since Parliament was too far for this small group to influence, they focused on the man who was supposed to sell the stamps themselves, a well-connected Bostonian politician named Andrew Oliver, and they set their plan into motion on August 14th. If you came into Boston that morning, you would cross Boston Neck, the thin spit of land that connected Boston to the rest of the continent. There was only one road into town, and as you rode in on the edge of town, you would think you were still in the countryside, with sparse houses, rolling grassy hills. The further you traveled, the closer you got to the center of town where things became more dense. Right at the corner of Orange Street and Essex Street, you'd always pass under a gigantic elm tree that hung over the road. It was a familiar sight, but this time something was different. A crowd of people gathered, laughing and jeering. And there in the tree hung a grisly effigy, a life-size dummy of a man hanging from a noose. He had an armband with the letters A-O for Andrew Oliver, and a poem pinned to his chest. A goodlier sight who e'er did see, a stamp man hanging on a tree. And a note below said, Anyone who removes this is an enemy to his country. Next to the effigy hung a boot with the devil's head poking out, signifying the Earl of Butte who many thought was an architect of the Stamp Act. This threat to a public official did not go unnoticed. The governor's council met in a panic and dispatched the sheriff to take the effigy down. But when he got to the tree, he quickly realized he was outnumbered. Tough working men surrounded the tree led by a cobbler named Ebenezer McIntosh, who was known as a leader in the South End street brawls. The sheriff fled the scene. The effigy was cut down and paraded through the streets, people raising chants of liberty, property, no stamps. They marched through the center of town, barging through the ground floor of the old state house that still stands today. When they reached his home, Andrew Oliver was long gone. They broke some of his windows and tore down a fence. They went up the hill behind his house 
and constructed a pyre. They placed the effigy through a mock trial and found it guilty. They stamped on it, cut off its head, and burned it in a bonfire. The very next day, Andrew Oliver announced his resignation. And furthermore, he complied with the demands of the crowd and came below that very same elm tree to publicly renounce the position. When news of what had happened in Boston was published in the other colonies, effigies were made, resignations were demanded. Soon, not a single man in the 13 colonies was willing to take the job of selling stamps, and the Stamp Act would shortly be repealed. The tree where this happened was ever after known as Liberty Tree. It became a meeting place, the center of protests, a truly democratic symbol, unlike the walls of Faneuil Hall that only admitted the landed gentlemen of the town to vote. The Liberty Tree was a place where anyone could gather. The Stamp Act was repealed and August 14th was celebrated for years afterward as a patriotic holiday, commemorating a time when the people rose up as a community to force the powerful to remember who they are supposed to serve. Liberty Tree, this symbol of the power of the people, is a largely forgotten symbol. So join me in remembering Liberty Tree. I've created my own traditions for this holiday, which include having some punch, gathering together under some kind of tree or representation of one indoors, and telling this story. To remember, when we all work together, people like you and me can change history.